A massive thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Stick around for a special offer that will save you 83% on an account with one month free. My thoughts on the Ubisoft way of doing things are well documented at this point, with the homogenization of their design principles across different franchises, as well as their increasingly egregious in-game monetization, making me consider why we even play games in this day and age, as the publisher seems hell-bent on making their products worse, more of an outright chore to play for the sake of drawing a few more bucks out of players' pockets so said players can be granted the mercy of having to play less of the video game they paid for. That said, over the years of doing this YouTube thing and having to get into some critical mindset about almost everything I play, I can't deny that there's something comforting about reaching the last quarter of the year and getting a big old Ubisoft sandbox to switch my brain off and breeze through. Most of the time you know exactly what you're getting into as you whittle away at cookie cutter objectives in a fairly pretty open world. It's a cosy blanket of mindless action to warm me up as we enter the autumn months. And it was this mindset that prompted me to request a code for Ghost Recon Breakpoint, despite all the talk of its apparently woeful time saver DLCs, despite being burned by this same framework in last year's Assassin's Creed, I just wanted to not think about a game too deeply. What I ended up getting, however, was an experience so strange that I can't stop thinking about it, one that I've legitimately struggled to find the words to describe. Let me be clear up front, this is a shoddy product that I don't think you should buy, but one that I've ended up having incredibly complicated feelings about that I'm going to attempt to make sense of here. And I guess it all starts with the fact that even considered within the wealth of bad Ubisoft ports over the years, Breakpoint is, on so many levels, one of the most broken AAA PC games I've played in recent times. The game is hardly going to win any awards for its visual fidelity, but more importantly, the technical framework supposed to prop up the experience is flimsy as all hell, with frequent issues ranging from collision detection, freezing, animation glitches, crashes, to problems altogether more odd. A mission whose cutscene featured characters freaking out about an incoming attack would see me spending a good minute or so looking for where these enemies actually were, before a cutscene would play thanking me for my supposed assistance, at which point all the enemies suddenly started appearing right next to me as seemingly shocked at my presence as I was at theirs. And this wasn't the only case of that happening, enemies would fail to load into a level so often that it became one of the key characteristics of my playthrough. I'd sneak into a base to find it totally empty, only for the map to alert me that I was suddenly surrounded moments later. Within co-op, the one thing the game desperately wants you to participate in, I would sometimes see my partner taking damage from and shooting at seemingly nothing as we advanced through a base that might as well have been worlds apart. It's not just that the game is a technical disaster however, that stuff was often hilarious to see play out. The problem is that while Ubisoft games have always had that weird alien feeling about them where you can see interesting unique ideas just below the surface stamped out for the sake of broad appeal, I don't think any of their games have had quite the identity crisis of Breakpoint. For example, there are systems in place here that want you to feel more involved in your soldiers' well-being as they traverse a hostile environment, but seconds later you'll be calling upon and casually jumping out of your seemingly limitless supply of health helicopters, leaving the game landing somewhere in the middle of Arma and Just Cause and it's as whiplash inducing as that combination sounds. It speaks to perhaps my main issue, that Breakpoint seems to lack any kind of soul, or rather any hint of a unifying vision behind its barrage of unrelated systems. I hate the idea that developers at any level are somehow thought of as lazy, you know, almost any game requires an incredible amount of work, but I couldn't shake that this game feels like very little care went into it, that people would thoughtlessly pipe vague ideas on top of a shooter framework, survival, loot, a kind of pseudo-detective element and the like, but with zero commitment to fleshing out any one of them, leaving us with a functional mechanical core and a bunch of extraneous bits sort of dangling off of. In short, it was consistently baffling to me how much stuff is in this game and how little any of it actually matters. But the curious thing about all of this, the thing I'm still struggling to fully make sense of, and bear with me here because this might sound nuts, is the idea that the ways in which Breakpoint point is broken are precisely what keep it from getting in the way of itself. Uh, let me explain. 
right after I take a moment to thank this video sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN or virtual private network that encrypts all data sent via the internet. Not only does this help to provide peace of mind that your privacy is safe while browsing online, helping to protect against hackers, criminals and unwanted surveillance, it also allows you to bypass geographic content restrictions by essentially changing what country you're accessing the internet from. I'm sure most of us have been in the situation where you've heard about a film or show being released on Netflix or other streaming service seen everyone getting excited about it online, only to find that the release is limited to a certain region. With Surfshark, it's literally a couple of clicks and you can access whatever you want, arbitrary restrictions be damned. It's simple, fast, reliable, and it means I can watch The Departed whenever the mood takes me. What's not to like? What's more, Surfshark is offering writing on games viewers a special offer. If you head to the link in the description below and use my offer code GAMES at checkout, you'll save 83% with one extra month free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk to try out for yourself. Once again, click the link in the description and use the code GAMES at checkout to take advantage of this great offer which really helps the channel to boot. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring the video and now back to explaining why the ways in which Breakpoint is broken are what keep it from getting in the way of itself I guess. See, many have lamented the game's loot system for example, decrying it as pointless to have a gear score attached to equipment when a headshot will take almost all enemies down in one hit. But the thing is, I've never been a loot game fan and in a day and age where game game after game has gone the quasi-RPG route in hiding every enemy behind an arbitrary numeric health bar, turning even minion level foes into bullet sponges, it was surprisingly refreshing to have a game simply reward good accuracy, even if that never seemed like Breakpoint's intent. It means that the loot system, arguably the basis of the game's progression and economy, is ill thought out to the point of being legitimately busted. I mean, the thought of buying any of the much discussed microtransactions never crossed my mind thanks to how many skill points were doled out and how minuscule their effects ended up being, and my gameplay experience was decidedly better for it, removing the abstraction of numbers and letting me focus on the moment to moment action. In fact, part of the reason the game's technical state is so disheartening is that the tactical core of it all, when it works, is quite often exciting. For all that the enemy's threat lies more with your relative fragility and their ability to bombard you rather than outsmart you, I'm not kidding when I say that combined with the game's wide open arenas, each of my encounters ended up dynamically moving along a kind of narrative spectrum, from Rambo to Commando, toying with my prey from afar, then being forced to move around the uneven terrain in order to change my vantage point until I realise that there's nowhere else to go and things get a bit explosion-y. Despite the garish reminders that this game is apparently optimised for co-op, I had way more fun taking on the challenge of essentially playing all the classes myself. Suddenly the mindless action I'd signed up for became a lot more tense and involved. And all of this came with occasional moments of emergent gameplay where a clockwork system such as a train would interrupt an otherwise breathless gunfight, creating a standoff as the enemies advancing on me were forced to stop, allowing me a crucial moment to focus. Moments like this provide an ebb and flow, held almost a kind of unique micro-narrative within many combat encounters that makes simply inhabiting the role of the lone wolf anxiously navigating a hostile environment far more compelling than the absolute waste of a plot driving it and I mean it when I say the environment is hostile, I actually found the world design here kind of fascinating, because unlike the colourful recreation of San Francisco found in Watch Dogs 2, or the jungle gym Odyssey managed to create out of ancient Greek history, Breakpoint is neither pretty to look at nor fun to navigate. It's not like you're exploring the ruins of a once great technical civilization gone awry, that thing we've seen in games a million times before. No, the cyber utopia shown in the game's intro gives way to something less coherent than that. This is a barren expanse broken up with the occasional glut of angular, some might call it ugly architecture. And so it ends up feeling less like a world in which nature has taken back its rightful place, as much as technology never really getting a chance to start, where what residential infrastructure you do come across is often full of NPCs going about their daily lives, yet still feels hollow, distant and empty. Sometimes it's literally a facade, it's bleak, uncanny, almost reminiscent of a Fallout title at times. My grimy new metal dude would barrel into town only to be greeted with shock from the denizens of these weirdly pristine housing blocks and I'd think, are you 
not seeing what's going on just over there? How are you all basically fine? Why are you not freaking out about this? Further, the island this infrastructure sits upon doesn't feel equipped to hold it, leaving me questioning not only the purpose of these areas, but how you'd even get there under normal circumstances. See, most games try to get you from point A to B as efficiently as possible, whereas here I'd sometimes spend more time figuring out how to climb a mountain than I would dealing with the fairly innocuous objective at the top of it. I'd trip up while trying to carefully descend into an enemy base and end up tumbling down like a cartoon doofus. This world is so weirdly laid out, so slapdash, that it doesn't feel like it was meant to be traversed by a video game character. Like the devs just randomly generated jungle landscape number 5 and said sure that'll do. And you know what? In a more carefully thought out game with a more focused vision, that might not necessarily be the worst thing. See, all of this combined with the fact that I largely played on my own, contributed to an atmosphere where no matter where I went, I couldn't make sense of the workings of this world. I never really felt safe. I could see it in my character's run animation as he drearily made the pilgrimage across yet more land to yet another outpost to perform the exact same function he always did. He was as exhausted as I was becoming, as broken by the game as the game itself was broken. And as much as the survival system this animation is tied to proves to be almost meaningless, it did get me thinking. The game is clearly a janky mess, but the feelings that that invoked, desolation, loneliness, powerlessness, etc, are these emotions really that undesirable in a game about being a soldier trapped in a hostile world filled with people trying to kill you? This is a game that would sometimes have me aiming at a rock in the distance waiting for it to move. The game's building blocks were so unstable, its visuals so muddy and prone to glitches, that I found myself growing to distrust the very fundamentals of its world to the point that it told me a lot about my character's state of mind, and where have I seen that in war games before? Let me be clear here, because it might sound like I'm making excuses for a bad game. Nothing positive here feels like the result of carefully thought out design. In fact, it's the opposite. I get the feeling that if everything had gone right, if Breakpoint had been the game the developers intended it to be, it would try to convey the hardships of being a soldier by making you stop to drink some water every so often, I guess. Because that system has so little impact, you experience what it's like to survive in an unfriendly environment simply by trying to navigate said user-unfriendly environment. All of this is to say that if everything had gone to plan, Breakpoint would have been exactly the kind of game I expected when I requested that code weeks ago. Empty calorie action to turn my mind off to while lamenting how microtransactions were holding the game back, I suppose. Instead, I'm now thinking of the ways games could purposefully subvert the accepted technical norms of the medium in order to more effectively capture the grim realities of being a soldier on the battlefield. That doesn't make Breakpoint worthy of your purchase, not by a long shot, but at the very least, it did make me feel like all that time I put into this shambolic video game was at least not totally wasted. So I hope you enjoyed my piece on Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring the video and for the aforementioned offer you can take advantage of by checking out the link in the description. I'd also like to thank my patrons, without whom this show simply would not be possible. Your generous pledges really do make all the difference when YouTube's stability as a platform is becoming increasingly questionable. If you'd like to join the names on screen, maybe consider heading to patreon.com slash writing on games and pledging even a dollar or two. I cannot thank you enough for allowing me to keep doing this. Special thanks go to Mark B. Writing, C. Bass, Artyom Vitsyuk, Malemonides the Unwise, Kibi Amori, Rob, Bryce Snyder, Tommy Carver Chaplin, David Bjork, Lucas, Dallas Keen, William Fielder, My Dad, Ali Al Muhanna, Timothy Jones, Spike Jones, The Nameless Guy, Ham Migas, Samuel Pickens, Shardfire, Anna Pimentel, Jesse Ryan, Justin's Holderness, Nicholas Ross, and Charlie Yang. And with that, this has been another episode of Writing on Games. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.